We're the last of the cowboys to get the F gone, boys. Eighteen wheels on the concrete, it's a slow and dying breed. Rolling like Jesse James, a modern day outlaw game. If you're out here riding with me, come on back and make some noise. We're the last of the cowboys. It's a lovely Saturday afternoon. We're cruising just west of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, uh, some of the folks that are looking at this video here may recognize that truck right off the bat. Uh, it belongs to uh, uh, a fellow that many know as Little Ray, and also uh, Susie's riding along with Little Ray. Uh, why don't you formally introduce yourselves? Well, hello. We got Little Ray here, and Miss Susie right next to me. Here she is. Tell me what you prefer to be called, and uh, tell the viewers where you're from and, and what you're running there. Well, I like to be called Little Ray. Uh, my name is Ray Rodriguez, but I only answer to Little Ray more or less. Uh, we run a series of 1999, 379 extended hood. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of flatbed, step deck, RGN work. Uh, we're out of California, Salinas, California, latest capital of the world. Uh, been doing this since uh, 1984, and uh, enjoy doing it. Well, 1984—that's uh, that's quite a while. And tell me how uh, how you found yourself in a truck. Well, I was born and raised into a truck. My dad was a truck driver, owner operator, for about 15 years. Uh, that's when I started up when right out of high school, didn't want to go to school, didn't know no better. And started trucking then and and uh, he passed away back in 95 and I just continued on. Well, I'm sure that was uh, something that was a bit difficult at the time. Uh, any any fellow that that has family that's in the, in the trucking business, it's, it's horrible to lose family. But uh, tell me how, how do you go about growing your business? Well, I had a dream and this is all I wanted to do and follow my dream and just don't give up. Uh, you know, you want to, you know, you want to have a nice looking truck. The thing is pride. A lot of it has to do with pride in what you do. I don't care if you're flipping burgers or driving trucks. You just take pride in what you do. It seems like some pride and some things have gone off the window, especially when it comes to work and having a work ethic. In your case, you said you're born into trucking, so you were exposed to trucking. 
and you probably learned how to work at a young age. You know, kind of explain that for me, what it was like to see your family, see your father, you know, work a business, and how, how did you pick up on that? Well, to, I didn't see my dad very much. He was around and around in spirit. He kept food on the table and a roof over our heads and shoes on our feet. Uh, but we, now he supported us, supported me and the family and everything that we've done. I've done a lot of sports when I was growing up. He was there sponsoring us. Uh, but physically, you know, I didn't see him very much. Uh, but I knew he was there. Uh, yeah, I've learned how to work at, at a very young age. Yeah, totally. Uh, and the, the work ethic and the pride that we do, you know, we just from a very young age, I took pride in what I've done. Everything I've done from shining shoes to washing cars to cutting lawns and driving trucks. And at what point did you feel that you wanted to be a truck driver? I guess at one point I did, and at one point was when I was very young, I figured about seven, seven years old. Uh, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be like my dad. And uh, kind of wanted to change one thing was to be around for the family more and being on the road, but that didn't happen. <laughs> but like I said, drug has been good to us. Uh, a lot of people don't like it. And just that, that's it. Susie, this question's for you. When it comes to being involved in the trucking business and you have a family, you know, the husband wants to go out and get on the road and the wife has to take care of things at the house. Uh, being in the business that you're in, what could you say to uh, to to a wife uh, to help her further understand or give her some pointers on how to run a trucking household? Hey, Chris. Um, I think you have to have a lot of patience and understanding that your husband out providing for the family. Um, that's the main thing, and you know, trusting what he's doing. And yeah, he's gone. You know, week or you know, maybe a month at a time, but um, you always have to, be, I guess, have faith um, that he's uh, doing everything he's supposed to be doing. And when it comes to the operation of the, of the home and things like that, uh, what are some of the things that you found that worked work best? And of course, your business is structured different differently. We'll get into that in a minute, but what are the things that you found that work best when it comes to actually running the house? Well, since it's only me and him at home, um, it's pretty easy right now. Um, so just, you know, clean house and, you know, when he comes in, get his clothes ready and, you know, make sure I enjoy his time when he comes home. You know, maybe he's home one or two days. So it's the quality time we, he has at home, you know, share his chat. Over the years that I've seen you guys at shows, I've, I've seen several of your trucks, and I don't think I've ever asked how many trucks you, you run all together. So tell me about the structure of the business that you have now. Well, we have four trucks. Um, everybody knows that we have one strictly show truck that we don't work. Uh, we show it, and the other three are uh, working show trucks. Okay. And for the people that have seen these, uh, I believe I've featured them on Big Rick videos before and uh, we've been able to get some really nice close-up views of the trucks. And so looking at your trucks, there's a lot of airbrushing and things. Tell me about, you know, your style uh, for the themed truck. So, you know, tell me about some of the visions. Tell me about how you come about putting together uh, the trucks that you do. And this could be an answer for either one of you. There's the, the theme to come up from every truck is different. You know, we got Wicked, Wicked with all the gargoyles. We got Hardway with all the uh, real flames. We got Patron. It's pretty simple, just flames. Then we got uh, Uno Mas, which is one more uh, with flames and a little bit of a dragon and whatnot. How we come up with it, I'll let Susie answer that. So we started with um, El Patron, and El Patron is uh, named El Patron because Dre is the boss, and um, he likes to drink tequila, Patron. So that's how we came up with El Patron's name. Um, Hardway, 
Um, we came up with Hardway's name with um, Ray likes to play crap. So we came with you know, the Hardways, like to play the Hardways. But also, that was the first truck when he got back into trucking. So he came up the hard way uh, with that. So then we ended up buying uh, Wicked. So with Wicked, we came up with uh, the idea, let's go with some kind of, you know, evil and not really evil, but just Wicked. And we. You know, kept on coming up with ideas, so that's what Wicked came out. And Uno Mas was supposed to be an easy paint job, was not supposed to be a full show truck. So when he tells me, what are we going to name the truck? And I'm like, ah, I guess one more. And then he says, one more, yeah, Uno Mas. So that's where Uno Mas came from. A lot of people, they really enjoy having uh, the hand on a truck, and it's even better when you can actually take it somewhere and get some recognition for it and allow people to enjoy it all over the world. So, I mean, it's a big effort, you know, coming to these shows. There, It isn't cheap. It isn't easy. Uh, so I thank you guys for coming out to the shows. Thank you once again from all of us over here at Little Race Transport. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Peace out. Oh, well, we ain't done yet. We still got some more to go. <laughs> Amen. But I just figured while we're on that vein of thing, it's always nice to just to be able to uh, spread the love around a little bit, you know? We talked about having some pride in what you do, but when it comes to the, uh, the actual working parts of things, a guy who has, uh, is working for a company, of course, he's got, that, he's got that ambition and he wants to get his own authority. What are some, some steps that he would need to to go through and what are some things that he should be prepared for? Well, when you first start, I know it's, you know, you gotta be, like I said, passionate and, and ambitious about it. Uh, you gotta put your heart and soul into it. It's rough out there, especially in the beginning. Uh, you gotta have working capital, uh, you know, just, and the ambition is, and the thrive and the, the know-how uh, the knowing that you're going to be gone from the house, uh, you know, having your own authority is not easy, and uh, pimping ain't easy either. Back in the day, uh, like I said, I started back in '84, and you know, I learned a lot from my dad and uh, the do's and don'ts. One thing is, you know, don't lie to your customers. Be upfront with them; they're more than understanding on, you know, being late or. You know, blow out tires and stuff like that. And I think, you know, we got the respect that we have for one another as drivers, our owner operators. You know, you go down the road, you give the deuces, you know, wave to hi to everybody, one another. Uh, now, you know, the, the, you know when, you, uh, when you pass a guy out, you flash your lights and, you know, they give you the thank you by flashing their lights back at you. And uh, just, you know, the respect. The respect is still there between the older generation to the younger generation and, uh, I think that's what we need more of respect from one another not just as a trucking company but as a nation you know and I think that's what we're missing in this whole country it's still there but like I said we still need it it used to be fun don't get me wrong it's still fun but now it's more like a job but uh, you gotta make the best of it you know, we come out here and do the shows that we do, and we have fun. Well, you got that right.
707 lights on this truck itself. Uh, between the bumper, uh, made by Valley Chrome, with Udo Moss engraved in it. It lights up. They switch from blue to amber and blue to red. The lights are made by trucks. The fenders we got are a badass made them. Good old John over there. The visor come out of Valley Chrome. We got Dynaflex stacks on it, 8 inch. Thank you Dynaflex, Corey and Denise over there. Valley Fab did our painting. We brought in all the four areas, came in and did our airbrushing. You guys run flatbeds, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it just flatbeds that you run? We got flatbeds, we got step decks, 53s and 48, uh, spread axle and tandem axle. Um, yeah, usually all the trucks have a have a trailer for it. This one here have not had a trailer for it, haven't had time, but we're looking. Looking to buy another trailer and match it up. Well, what do you enjoy most about flat bedding and step deck? Well, I can, I mean, like I said, I've been a flat bed hauler all my life, from doubles to singles here. And, uh, you know, we're in the lettuce capital of the world. Uh, everybody thinks, oh, you're from Salina, so you haul produce. And no, we haul flat bed. We do a lot of the produce hauling of the equipment wise on the, on the equipment side from tractors to harvesters to forklifts to uh, the heavy haul stuff is uh, the cooling equipment. What I enjoy is you know you get out and move around and, and you know, get a little bit of exercise that would, us truck drivers usually don't get or don't do. You know we, we got to jump around from cooler to cooler you know, or from place to place to do our pickup. Usually you know we go to one spot load up and we're gone. I just love the one pick and one drop. Some guys have said that too, and they, they've said that it's nice where you get to the delivery location, they're expecting you, they're happy uh, that you're there because they, whatever you have, it's a key component. Uh, do you find that to be true as well? That is so true. Uh, yeah, they're there, they're waiting for you. You know, you get, you know, your appointment times, and you know, you get there and you're done. And, and the other stuff, the produce and you got an appointment time and you sit there and you get there and you check in and you're waiting there for a day or two just for two or three pallets of product. And uh, with our stuff here, you know, usually you know, they're waiting for it, they'll offload you, get you done, and get you in and out. And that's what I like about it. 10 four. We're here and you're just home right along. Tell me how the truck has been doing uh, fuel economy wise. On the fuel economy, uh, this truck here is 3406 um, with 550 horsepower in it. I personally, I really don't look at fuel mileage. I know there's a lot of people out there that that's out there looking for, and I just like it. I know what I like and I know what I want, and that's what I go by. Um, if this truck here gets like right around 6.5 as it is, and uh, I'm happy with that. Most of my other trucks get six, five and a half, six, and like I said, what we do, it's all you know, averages out to about six. Right on. Well, again, that's one of those things. You know, uh, I completely understand uh, where you're coming from when it comes to uh, not being concerned with the fuel mileage as as much. You know, you do what you got to do, let the truck run, and just get the work done. 10 for like I said this truck here has over a million miles on it and uh, it's been good you know there's a Chevrolet Tella in it 1540 non-synthetic it's just great running great runs strong and I ain't afraid to take it across the country as you can see 10-4 
want to know, but how many uh, miles we put on this truck a year? Sure, anything you'd like to share. Uh, I'm sure everyone would like to hear it. Well, you know, we come out to Oklahoma City with a load. We're going to go back up to Illinois, pick up another partial, a couple of pickups that a partner of mine bought. Uh, we put on about anywhere between 85 to 10,000 miles a month, which we figure out maybe about 100,000 miles a year on each and every one of our working show trucks. And, uh, you know, they are working trucks, and we're proud of them. 10 4. get back in here toward uh, the Shell Super Rig show. It's been nice to get a good look at your truck and, and hear a little bit about you, and not just yourself, but uh, Susie also. Yes sir, Chris. We love having, the, having this time and opportunity to share our little story and our trucks with, with the people out there. And like I said, we thank you. Thank you for coming out there with us. Pleasure. Chris, it's always a pleasure to see you, and thank you for the interview, hon. You're welcome. Go ahead and uh, stay in that right lane and come by me, and hit them old Jake Briggs. We got us a little low bridge here. Mm -hmm. 